And we're here. How are we doing today, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce here on Tuesday. Uh, while I mute my phone, pardon me. Ah, Tuesday, October the 23rd. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce, the daily show, the five o'clock edition. We love talking cruise ships, cruise lines, and everything else, talking about cruising and everything else. Um, how are you guys doing today? Welcome back to my show. I'm glad to have you here. Beautiful day here in Creston again. We've had gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous sunny weather. It's a typical fall for us. We're about, uh, oh, 58, 60 degrees for our high temperature today. That is kind of normal this time of year. Um, uh, there's talk about snow in New England. <laughs> Certainly, it's the next couple of days. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh, my God. Uh, it got me chortling earlier today when I saw that. Um, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. I, I want to mention that. Uh, Going to talk a bit about Hurricane Willa and how that's going to affect the Northeast. Unbelievable, this storm. Um, yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome to the chat. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found me. Uh, thank you for all your support and all of your kind words. As always, subscriber accounts are growing again. Uh, we hit 4,500 subscribers the other day, and I thought, oh, this is great, 4,500. Well, geez, uh, 4,534 right now, another 17 since yesterday afternoon. So, 30, 4,500, 34 subscribers. Welcome 17 new subscribers. If any of you are watching that are have never been here before, you're watching me live for the first time, I'm really glad you're here. Let me know uh, that you're watching for the first time. Say hi to me. Text in there. Just send a little message. Say hi, Bruce. First timer from uh, wherever you're at. Tell me what town you're at and uh, what's your high temperature today. Say hi to the gang here. We'll say hi to you. You'll probably notice there's a whole bunch of messages already here. People have been talking to each other for probably 25 minutes before I even on the air. This is quite normal for this show. We're on five days a week at five o'clock Eastern time and Saturdays at two. And uh, those of you who are, you know, see all these comments going through here, these are uh, people who are watching me uh, almost daily and we're all addicted to cruising. We, we just can't wait to get to our next cruise ship. Um, but if you've never cruised before, this channel's for you too, because uh, we love talking cruise ships all the time, and we are uh, use us as a resource. Uh, use me and my, my my peeps here as a resource for any questions you have about going on a cruise, uh, learning about the cruise ship you're going on and the cruise line, or if you're thinking of going on a cruise, what, what cruise line might be best for you, uh, or if you have any questions about ports of call, anything like that. We'll be more than happy to give you our two bits worth of advice, and uh, we'll kind of uh, try to guide you straight and kind of go from there. So, yeah, say hi to me. Tell me where you're watching from. Pamela just just signed in. I see it here, Indiana. Pamela, Indiana, what town in Indiana? The gang's going to ask you, what town are you watching me from, that beautiful state? Uh, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Um, and a whole bunch of folks have been signing in already, like I said. Uh, the first comment came in at uh, <laughs> 311 Eastern. <laughs> Ah, is that right? No, 411 Eastern. Yeah, 4, 40, 40 minutes before I went on the air, people already talking to each other before I got on. That's fantastic. Thank you for uh, coming by. Uh, a quick shout outs. I wanted to make a couple shout outs today. Uh, our good friend, uh, uh, Robert Brandt in, uh, in St. Thomas, uh, British Virgin Islands, uh, and Peter Heckema uh, in, uh, in Tarpon Springs, Florida. I want to say special shout out to both uh, gentlemen today. Uh, both in the past 24 hours have made a contribution to this channel through my PayPal donate site. Thanks you both. Thank, thank you to both of you as always. It's hard, it's hard to say today. Thank you very much to Robert Brandt and to uh, uh, Peter Heckema for uh, making a contribution to my channel. Uh, keeps me going. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Also, those of you out there who are supporting this channel by acquiring Traveling with Bruce merchandise like these t-shirts or my, uh, my coffee mugs or a travel mug or a wall clock or whatever it is you're getting on the Redbubble store that you can find on my homepage, Thank you for uh, your contributions that way too. And then of course, there are some of you out there who are Amazon shoppers and you have taken the opportunity to go to your Amazon, uh, go to Amazon through my uh, link, my Amazon affiliate link, which again, you can find in the description below this uh, show, or you can find it on my homepage on one of those icons, either up here or up here. Thank you to all of you who have been going to Amazon, picking up a few items for your home, and uh, it, it turns out that I get finder's fees on whatever it is you guys buy. It varies from 2% to 8%, depending on what it is. Thank you all so much for helping my channel survive. It keeps me going economically. I am a full-time YouTuber. I do this show, this right here, 
uh, eight shows a week live, two trivia shows, Thursdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, including tonight at 8 o'clock, by the way. Trivia is on at 8 tonight. Um, I do eight live shows a week plus regular videos on the cruise ship business. It's my full-time gig. And uh, your your support of this channel is what makes it happen. So thank you all very much. And I'm that's why I'm so happy. That's why I'm so thrilled whenever I get new subscribers. As that subscriber base grows, the hope I have is that my views will keep going up, which they are. And um, and uh, the uh, the potential for uh, uh, further support keeps coming our way. It's just what it's all about. So the numbers are the secret to success. Bigger the numbers, the likelihood of success continues. And uh, we've come a long way. A, month, a year ago, I was at maybe 35 subscribers. Today, 4,534 of them. So I've added 4,500 subscribers in a year. <laughs> I could, would never have believed it. Unbelievable guy, guy talking from his living room in Creston, BC about cruise ships, uh, hanging out with his peeps and posting all kinds of videos. And um, I'm excited. Uh, that's really exciting stuff. Love it. Okay. Uh, thank you for all of that. Um, news today. I don't have very much today. A couple of pieces of news I want to mention today. Uh, a little bit of, I, I kind of say it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, let me move the camera in a little bit here, the computer a little tighter. You can, you've already seen my shirt. Um, First of all, the, the the big well, the big news, depending on where you are, if you are in Mexico, it's big news. Hurricane Willa. Now, Hurricane Willa is going to hit the west coast of Mexico uh, probably as we are speaking here. It's uh, already approaching just south of uh, Mazatlan, and uh, that's that's a place I visited a couple times now on cruises. I've really enjoyed my time in Mazatlan. My fingers are crossed for everybody there. I'm hopeful that that the uh, that the storm will hit in more of more of a rural area, not in Mazatlan proper. I understand that it is south of the city, but it is a city of half a million plus, a significant sized town. And uh, the hope I hope have is that the storm surge isn't too bad and uh, that it will pass quickly and or dissipate and what have you. But I do understand from the weather forecasters that uh, this storm uh, will up. Uh, it's already spread cloud cover all the way across uh, Mexico into uh, Texas and throughout the southeast. And this storm is going to track that direction. It's going to track across Texas uh, along the Gulf Coast and then through uh, probably uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, uh, and perhaps even towards uh, northern Florida, Georgia, uh, South Carolina. And then it's going to head north and become an Atlantic, an Atlantic-based storm as it curls north as a nor'easter. And it's heading for Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, that whole area and uh, the way the weather systems are lining up right now there is a cold front that has been coming down from canada the jet stream has really dipped down into the u.s and cool weather has come way down into the heartland of the usa and is now shifting over to the east and by the time willa the leftovers of willa work its way towards this eastern area this a particular cold front may well make the combination a uh, perfect storm system where we may have a snowstorm situation blizzard situations in the northeast uh, by this weekend by like sunday or monday saturday sunday monday something in there it's still too fuzzy to know but there's there's all kinds of chess pieces that if they're in the right place at the right time with what's happening here havoc all kinds of havoc i have friends of mine who are on a cruise ship right now the msc divina they're headed from uh, Bermuda to New York City. They should be in New York tomorrow morning. And they're scheduled to be there for, I think, two days and then leave New York to head to Miami, which is the conclusion of this repositioning cruise they're on that started in Marseille, France. And uh, I'm kind of crossing my fingers that they get out of New York early enough because they're pro possibly, they could possibly be in a scenario that Jennifer and I were in where, unbeknownst to Jennifer and I, we got on the Explorer of the Seas, uh, Royal Caribbean cruise ship, for a Caribbean cruise leaving New Jersey, Bay, uh, uh, Bay on New Jersey, um, left New York in gorgeous weather, 60 degree weather in March, calm bay, you could see the New York skyline reflecting off the water, I mean it was really nice. The next morning, uh, we were at sea uh, five, six hundred miles south of New York, steaming straight south, and coming at us from the south was a cyclone, a nor'easter, and uh, we had hit that baby right on, and the strategy the captain had was, we're steaming right into it, it's going north, we're going south, and the two shall never meet. Well, the two met 
we met that thing right through it and it was 30 hours of hell we did not enjoy it we were in inside room and uh boy the ship got tossed around and this is a gigantic almost 1100 foot long ship 150 feet wide biggest ship i'd been on up to that point in time 3200 3400 passengers and we got we got it and it would not stop and there was no way to make it stop the captain did everything he could to minimize the effects uh, they actually uh, slowed the ship down uh speed wise to uh lessen the blow um but uh nonetheless that was a rough ride we did come out of it the other side 30 hours later and then it was wonderful but uh, i'll tell you uh, ever since that uh, storm uh 20 foot waves don't bother me anymore i see 20 footers 25 footers <laughs> child's play i've seen 60 and 80 footers <laughs> and been through it 20 footers are just an inconvenience um but i'm hoping my friends here on the Davina won't have the same issue i'm hoping that when they get out of new york that they too will steam straight south and that the uh, nor'easter will arrive about a day after they get out of there i'm kind of i don't know We'll see. Uh, it all depends on these uh, frontal systems and everything else, but the, the, the high pressure systems and low pressure systems, there's that meeting in the middle there where the air gets compressed and these vortexes uh, really get tight. And uh, the system comes through there, it just gets shot through there like a cannon. And you're just hoping that you're not a ship in the middle of all that. So I know the folks at MSC, uh, they're watching the systems carefully. They will, they will dictate the departure out of New York accordingly. Uh, trying not to, uh, trying to avoid not to go through the meat of a, a nor'easter. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on what I see. If any ships are going to have any inconveniences like that, I'll let you know. We'll post quick videos and tell everybody what's going on. Uh, other news that uh, I wanted to talk about today. Um, I've been, I was reading up. I, I mentioned this yesterday uh, about uh, the Bahamas. Uh, how the Bahamian, the Bahamian government does not want to pay twelve million dollars a year anymore to cruise lines to get them to come to visit the Bahamas, um, which I found surprising because I thought, why would the Bahamas have to pay a cruise company to come to the Bahamas? I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's the first group of islands off of, off of Florida. What the hell do you need to pay them to come for you to you for? Uh, you're, you've got the real estate that they want. Uh, you're talking tropical islands, tons of them. You got ports of call. Uh, you got all kinds of cheap labor that you can use if you need them. Uh, I, I don't know what the big deal is, but. I guess the strategy for the Bahamas was, uh, well, we'll pay cruise lines to come so we have a steady supply of, 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 uh, of passengers that we can sort of count on uh, a year in advance. We can sort of go, okay, we know that Royal Caribbean is going to send so many ships with these many passengers. Carnival's going to do it. Disney's going to do it. Norwegian's going to do it. And uh, it worked. Uh, the Bahamas, uh, gosh, I would say NASA probably gets almost 2 million passengers a year, maybe 1.8 million uh freetown i'm not sure how many they get but still they get passengers too and of course uh, disney has uh, has uh, castaway key um and there are other you know private uh, private resorts now the uh, disney company just signed a deal as i said yesterday with the bahamian government to uh, approve the bahamian government finally approved this uh, idea for disney to, to build a new 400 million dollar uh facility um lighthouse uh, point but um why why should the why should these guys be paying well they've decided not to do it anymore they're not going to pay uh, 12 million bucks a year a million bucks a month for passengers they're just going to let the cruise companies uh, decide whether or not they want to come because the problem is and some of you out there probably know this problem firsthand the problem is uh when cruise ships land in nassau for example and they park in the uh, in the dock area there they put the uh, they put the ship there tie it down the passengers get off the ship and walk into downtown nassau uh, you got to walk the gamut. You got to walk the uh, the uh, the hordes of uh, desperado sellers of every knickknack that you can imagine, and all of these desperate cabbies who are hoping that you'll grab their cab for a you know a nice long ride, or you'll take a cab throughout you know for an island uh, tour, so that the cabbie can get sixty, eighty, hundred bucks for the day. Uh, these folks are, you know, just one step away from the third world to try to get by, and uh, they're hoping that you'll do that. Well, so many passengers have been inconvenienced, accosted, <laughs> hustled, that they don't get off the ship anymore. Uh, they just don't get off the ship anymore. And uh, when you look at your itinerary for a seven-day cruise in the Caribbean, if one of your stops is Nassau, and you've done it before, a lot of passengers decide, I'm not getting off the ship at all. I'm just going to stay on the ship the whole day, and i got the pool to myself, or at least there will be way fewer people on the ship because most people will get off the ship 
and I'm just going to sunbathe here on the deck, and I'll be serviced by these uh, these uh, these people here serving me drinks. They'll have nothing better to do but look after me, like anything I can want. And uh, maybe I'll go to the uh, I'll go to the spa, I'll get a massage, or or I'll get a manicure, or get my hair done, whatever. Uh, but I'm not getting off this ship. Well, uh, the, the, the Bahamian government has decided, you know, we're going to play another game. If the game is called, instead of giving the cruise lines 12 million bucks a year, why don't we put 12 million bucks a year into our ports and enhance the customer experience, enhance the cruiser experience? Because we're, set, we're perfectly located from the US of A. There are a ton of cruise ships now at sea, more coming every year, bigger. We can handle the biggest ships at sea. Um, and we'll welcome them with open arms, but we'll make it much more palatable for the people to want to get off the ships and come to the shore. And so personally, I think that's a smart move. Uh, I think that's the best, the best way to go. Um, and perhaps you can find a way to, to, uh, I don't know, uh, put together some island tours that make more sense or, or find ways to en en enhance or or encourage, say, a bunch of golfers to go golfing for the day on the island. I don't know. Just come up with something. Um, but uh, this this nonsense of just paying cruise lines to bring people and then uh, these people getting subjected to all the stalls in those markets and stuff at, in downtown NASA, it's it's crazy. They got to they got to limit that. They got to got to ease it up. That won't, might not be politically popular with the government and its local uh, folks. But for the passengers, it'll be a lot pop very popular because they're just being costed. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that's one one thought I had on that. I'd be kind of curious to know if any of you had any stories in the Na NASA. Whenever you've been to NASA, have you ever had any issues? Let me know. Carnival Victory. The Carnival Victory cruise ship. I talked about this ship last week. It's going in for a major refurbishment. It's going to be renamed the Carnival Radiance. This is going to be done in 2020, which is, of course, a year and a half away. And therein lies a problem because today the Carnival Victory is having engine problems. Uh, there are what they call technical problems. This is what Carnival calls these technical problems. Yeah, it's called the motor ain't working too well and the ship can't go too quick. Uh, that's the actual issue. But if you're in the public relations business, you call it technical problems. Uh, Colonel Victory, on the cruise that they were supposed to be on right now, a four-day cruise, they were going to go to the Keys from Miami, and then they were going to go to Cozumel, and then back to Miami. Well, they can't do that, because the ship can't go that quickly. The engine is uh, problems with maybe one of the acepods or something. I don't know what the propulsion problem is, but there's a problem. They cannot go regular speed. So they have redirected the cruise ship to the Bahamas. Surprise, because it's right there. The Bahamas are, uh, are a couple hundred miles away from the from Miami. And the ship can easily in four days go to the Bahamas and back. And so the, the ship is now going to go to Nassau, Princess Key, uh, one day at sea and back to Miami. And it'll limp its way back. Apparently, there are people on board. They're called technicians. Uh, I call them mechanics. <laughs> See you later, Jen. Jen's heading out to get some caffeine-free Diet Coke because I'm getting low on the caffeine-free. She just said goodbye to all you guys. There she goes. Because of the contributions coming in from Peter Heckema and Robert Brandt today, we can I can send Jennifer out to go and get me some more some more caffeine free. Thank you again for your contribution. Um, anyway, mechanics are on board of uh, the uh, Carnival Victory right now to uh, repair the issue or figure it out. Um, who knows what the issue is? They're not they're not going to go into detail. Uh, these are kind of things that cruise blinds don't brag about. Um, and it's impossible to get an independently based uh, reporter down there to find out what's really happening. So it's word of mouth or what have you. But uh, when cruise, shi uh, cruise, ship cruise ships realign cruise, cruise liners to do super short uh, cruises, usually those are the most unreliable ships that they have with respect to long distance cruising. And uh, you can't rely on a cruise ship to go 1,500 miles in five or six days. You bring it down to five or 600 miles and you keep it close to the home port. And that's what they're doing here. Carnival Victory could probably use to go in for refurbishing now, not in 2020, but they got to go another year and a half before they can get her in and rename her because it is a $200 million build out on that ship. And I'm kind of curious, was there any money in the budget for the engines or were they thinking there were no problem with the engines? Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. All right. Uh, last bit of news I'll talk about today was uh, the big news uh, that was on the television today, actually, or one of the stories that was big news, and that was all about the stock market. Did you folks happen to notice 
what happened with the stock market today? Not a good day uh, for the first half of the day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down as much as what I heard, something like 540 odd points. Um, not good. Um, and cruise stocks were getting hit uh, earlier today with some down dips, uh, lower trading values. But as the afternoon came around, the market in the last two hours made a bit of a recovery. And for a while there, with about an hour to go, the thinking was, geez, the stock market might actually uh, not even have a down day at all. But it didn't quite make it. it. It got close to even and then backed off a tad. But the Dow Industrials, I believe, had a down day of about 100 odd points when it was all said and done, something in the 100 point range, uh, rather than 540 points. But the cruise stocks, uh, and that's what I want to mention today, just a quick little thing here. Some of you are shareholders of the company, and I would recommend you be shareholders of Royal or uh, Norwegian or Carnival. If you're ever going to go on these cruise lines for a cruise, you should be a shareholder. Own at least 100 shares of any of these companies. And when you go on one of their cruise lines, you as a shareholder are entitled to cabin credits, onboard credits for every cruise you take. And it doesn't matter what the what the cruise line is. In the case for, say, let's say for uh, Carnival, you own 100 shares of Carnival shares. Uh, Carnival happens to own Princess Cruise Lines. They own Holland America cruise lines. They own Cunard. You go on a cruise on a Carnival ship or a Cunard or a Princess or Holland America or a Costa or a P&O, you can get a cabin credit every time you take a cruise. You take a one-week cruise with any of those cruise lines, you get a $100 cabin credit being a shareholder. It's a freebie. Uh, if you go on three cruises a year, each one a week long, you're going to get $300 a year in cabin credits just for being a shareholder. So you buy the stock, you're never going to sell it. Just hang on to it forever. If you're taking, uh, if you're a fan of Royal Caribbean, own Royal Caribbean stock. If you're a fan of Norwegian, own Norwegian stock. Uh, and you can take their different lines. Or if you can afford it, have 100 shares of each and enjoy yourself <laughs> on all those cruise lines. Today, Royal Caribbean stock um, opened at $112.51. Went down to as low as $110.50 down two bucks, ended up closing at 114.84. <laughs> it actually gained 23 cents on the day when it was all said and done. Royal Caribbean was as low as 110.50 to close at 114.84. Came back $4.34 from the low of the day. By the way, Royal Caribbean, the high for the year, $135.65. That's the high price it traded at. The low price it's traded at in the last 52 weeks, 101.20. Still $13 from its low of the year. It got to within nine earlier today, but it didn't reach a new low for the year. Interesting on Royal Caribbean. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, it opened the day at 47.32, got down to 46.56, closed at 48.09, and uh, it lost 12 cents on the day. That's all it lost. Uh, 48.09 closing price, even though it was hit 46.50 at the low point on the day. So it was a buck fifty lower than where it closed at, but it didn't close that low. Very interesting. High for uh, the last year's high for uh, uh, Norwegian, sixty one eighteen. The alt, uh, the high for the last fifty two weeks. The low forty six sixteen. Right around midday today, very close to the all time low. This might be a good time to buy Norwegian. It's cheap. Carnival opened at fifty five ninety four. Got down to fifty five fifty two, uh, but it closed at fifty seven twenty three. It had a 75 cent gain today, actually gained one and a half percent. So the difference between the low of the day, 55.52, and the closing price of 57.23, dollar 70 odd a share bounce back. That's three and a half percent bounce back from the low of the day. The high for Carnival for the last 52 weeks, $72.70. The low price for the last 52 weeks was today's low of the day, 55.52. Somebody today bought the stock and somebody sold the stock. At the 52 week low of the year at 55.52, but it closed at 57.23. So whoever sold it's crying, whoever bought it is laughing, and that's how the stock market works. But if you buy it here, you buy any of these three shares here, you're buying them near the year lows. And if you're going to hold them for five or 10 years, because you're going to go cruising for at least five or 10 years, I think you're going to make money. Uh, you just stick around long enough, I think you'll be just fine. Anyway, interesting day on the stock market as a whole. Anyway, there you go. That is my uh, that is my uh, topic du jour that I want to mention today. For those folks out there who watch me to just get the news and then they take off, that's that's what I got. Unless you folks have got questions for me, we'll talk even more. I see questions have been coming in. 
First, I'll say hi to who's here and uh, remind everyone I'm on tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time for trivia tonight. I'm ready to roll. Uh, we'll have some fun with trivia. I'll be using the big-ass iPad and the new iPencil that I got for my friends in St. Thomas to help me with these quizzes, and uh, I think we'll have some fun. Uh, first of all, I want to say hi to who is here and who is here. Vivian Clark Nicholson has come in. Uh, Vivian has been texting back and forth with me on my channel. Uh, Vivian, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> I know it's late for you. Uh, she's in England in the UK and she's watching us tonight. Welcome, my dear. I'm glad you've made it to the show. Uh, Tom Henry was the second in to say hi to everybody, including Vivian. Um, uh, Tom asked uh, her, where are you in, uh, the, uh, in England in the UK? She says, I'm on the East Coast, a uh, port town called, and it looks like it's uh, pronounced low... Low Stoft, L O W E S T O F T. Low Stoft is how I'm going to say it. Um, welcome, Vivian. Welcome, Tom. I'm glad you're here. They were convincing back and forth. Uh, Paul Wilson came in to say hi. And then uh, Katie Haston came by to say hello. She's here. Alan Carter's here. Hey, Alan. Uh, Vivian and Tom and Vivian and Tom and Kat. Kat Rose, we're talking. Frank Rotondo is here. Hey, Frank, how you doing, buddy? Kat Rose is here. 67, mostly cloudy here in Sacramento. Sure beats 100 degrees, doesn't it? Fantastic in Sacramento. Uh, Ed Tolleson from the Big Apple is here. Hi, Ed. How you doing, pal? Welcome back. Beautiful day, he says, in New York. For now, it sounds good for now. We'll see how it lasts. Cool Jazz from New York is also here. Welcome. Wendy Thompson here from Ocala. Um, 74, light rain. Excuse me, light rain in Ocala. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, Sylvia from uh, from uh, from South Carolina is here. How you doing? Greensboro, uh, South Carolina. Hi, Sylvia. Welcome back. Uh, she's saying happy birthday to the twins. It's the twins' birthday today in St. Thomas. Robert Brandt's boys are 17. Robert, you're getting closer. They're getting they're gonna be gone. They're gonna be gone. You're getting there. Just hang in there another couple of well, another year. <laughs> hang in there, everybody. The twins are thinking, another year, we're out of here. And Robert's going, another year, they're out of here. Oh, they're going to university in Pennsylvania. It's all good. It's all gonna be good. Peter Heck and my hi, Bruce, and I'll just finished a walk on the beach, 85 degrees and beautiful in Tarpon Springs. Uh, also, just booked all our specialty dinners and shows for the Symphony of the Seas in 31 days. Yes, sir. Peter Hekema is going on the Symphony of the Seas in 31 days. Way to go, buddy. I know the countdown is on. That is awesome stuff. Wendy is wishing the twins a happy 17th birthday. Um, Sylvan Force is here. Hi, Bruce and all. Thumbs up to everybody for Bruce. Got 22, I see already. Uh, 55 are here. Hi, 55 people. 22 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, so far. Sebastian Shore is here. Hi, all. Hi, Sebastian. How are you? Sylvia saying it's 66 and sunny in Greensboro, North Carolina. Excuse me, it's North Carolina. Cat, uh, oi, uh, Sebastian, I'm at the beach. Um, Sylvia, no snow. She doesn't want snow. Edward Mullen, hello from uh, Loganville, Georgia. Uh, Edward, welcome to the show. I'm not sure if you're brand new or not. You sound new. I hope you're new. I love it when the newbies come by to say hi to me. This is great. I hope you become a regular watcher of my live shows. Welcome to the channel. Uh, Paul Wilga, Sylvan Forest. I love the pics of the flowers you've been posting. Makes me really li miss living in Florida. Uh, Sylvan is saying, snow in New England? I don't miss it one bit. So, Tweety, hi, everyone. I'm home doing chores. There's a fire alarm test in my building today, so I'm <laughs> bracing for the sudden noise and ongoing heart attack. Oh, so Tweety, hang in there. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, Sebastian, uh, do you go to Eastern Guilford HS is the question from Sylvia. Uh, Pamela Ara Aris is saying, I'm from Indiana, and uh, welcome, Pamela. Uh, Tom Henry, hi, Cool Jazz, and Paul. Paul saying, hey there, Tom. Uh, Pamela, Elkhart, Indiana is where I'm from. Welcome from Elkhart, Indiana, to my channel, to my show today. This is great. So to you, Robert. Uh, glad Robert's back on the radar. He is. Uh, apparently all is well. Friend in Austin, Texas. Kat is saying, friend in Austin, Texas, says she's under a boil water order for the next 10 to 14 days. The flooding in Texas was bad. I found, I heard today that the uh, Hurricane Willa, just to let you guys know, Galveston, Houston, four to six inches of rain expected within the next couple of days. This could be a problem for cruise ships in Galveston again. Uh, one to four inches through um, through Louisiana, through uh, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, and one to two inches to expect it perhaps in the Carolinas, all from the from Hurricane Willis. So we'll watch for that. That is not good. They don't need more rain in the southeastern U.S. They just don't. We'll have to see what happens here. Uh, Tom Henry, Sebastian Short cost me 140 bucks today buying Mega and Powerball tickets. Laugh out loud. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tom Henry, I wish you all the luck in the world. I want you to win so bad. You you know how bad I want you to win because of how generous you are to me. Oh, yes, please win, Tom. Any one of you out there, please win big money this Powerball. And think of your poor little YouTuber in Canada. Oh, my gosh. I have a vested interest in all of you winning something big. That would be great because uh, you folks are so generous to me. And Jennifer, um, <laughs> Wes Morrison, hello, 63 in rain in New Braunfels. Do you need more rain in New Braunfels, Wes? I'm not sure if you need more, but you're getting it. Tom Henry, Cat Rose, I was trying to get Kaya to bring Robert back today, but he, but, uh, but he uh, thought his mom and dad had special birthday plans for him and Janu tonight. So, yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Cool jazz. Don't forget me, uh, Tom Henry. Uh, Sylvia. Uh, so, so Sylvia saying, Tom Henry, I'm going to play after work, but not 140 bucks worth laughing out loud. Sebastian, wow, Tom, Wendy Thompson, Bruce, we ordered a wall mounted dr uh, dryer rack for the house today on Amazon. Oh, thank you very much. I ordered through my link on Amazon for that. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'll uh, look for that. That'll probably show in my, um, my report from Amazon tomorrow. I'll probably notice that. That's fantastic. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, and thank any of you who are buying anything through Amazon through my affiliate link, which you can find down below here in the description. That's fantastic. <laughs> Keeps me going. Uh, Tracy Dunlop. Hello, Bruce and all. Another great day in Naples. Thank you, Tracy, for joining me. 80s, she's saying, Cat Row is supposed to be uh, supposed to be category four or five. Yeah, it's a, it was a five. It's a four. It's nasty. And uh, we'll see how uh, how much rain comes with it. Uh, Sylvan Forrest, trivia tonight. Yay, I call dibs on Lower Slobovia and the Republic of Kiribati. <laughs> <laughs> in case any of those geography questions comes up, and there might just be a couple geography questions tonight. I've got a few other topics that I'm working on. Uh, yes, we're going to have some fun tonight with trivia if you can join me at 8 o'clock Eastern. So, Tweety, hey, Tracy Dunlop, sounds like a lovely day in Naples. Tom Henry, traveling Bruce, my theme for Amazon today was AC covers. A uh, nice cover for the outdoor unit that is size to the model, and then some items for the indoor unit we have in the master bedroom. Well, I'll have to look for those. So there's all kinds of orders being placed on Amazon today. Double thumbs up to all of you out there. Thank you so much uh, for using my link to do it. It costs you nothing different. It's just a, an affiliate commission comes to the provider of the leads. This helps so much. Every every source of income that way that I have just makes a difference. It's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Paul Wilgus, I laugh out loud, still bad. Uh, so Tweety, when is the storm going to hit? I'm leaving on Friday. Uh, for East Coast, yikes. Uh, well, the storm in the East Coast, they're saying sun, Saturday, Sunday uh, is the range, uh, depending on where it, it is. The further north, uh, a little bit, it'll, it'll be later. Uh, from what I understand, anyway, Saturday, Sunday, three, four days from now. Uh, Cat Rose, no, Wendy Thompson, anyone have any thoughts on Titanic 2? Uh, once was enough, sounds like a bad choy choy to try the Titanic. Well, uh, I, I've been reading up on the Titanic too. People have asked me about it from time to time. I will say uh, that uh, the last uh, the last of the details I received on it a few weeks ago, I read up some stuff on it. The ship is 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 under construction apparently in China. It will be a seaworthy vessel. It uh, will be, I think, twelve feet wider than the original because of modern day uh, navigation standards uh, with respect to how high it is out of the water what kind of a draft it'll have under the water line. It has to be a certain width. This ship will comply. The ship will have the modern, of course, all modern navigation, everything. The, sh the engines will be the latest technology. There'll be thrusters in the bow. It'll be able to bring itself into port without a tugboat. Unlike the original Titanic, it can do it all on its own. Um, it'll have all the air conditioning systems. It'll have all of the... Uh, compliant fire systems there won't be a bunch of guys down below stoking coal in the boiler or anything like that this will be a modern day cruise ship it will look a lot like the original titanic in a in the color scheme and the so-called funnels the funnels will be fake only one of them are going to be working with exhaust the other three are are fake they're going to be filled with communication equipment satellite wi-fi systems <laughs> um but here's the problem with this ship I think um, it's a one ship cruise line. It's owned by an individual investor or a group of investors that this person has put together. And they're going to have to fill the ship up themselves. They're going to have to run the ship themselves. Uh, they're going to have to hire someone to handle the logistics of operating a cruise ship. There are no uh, uh, ports of call uh, to call home on this ship that I'm aware of. This ship is an orphan once it's out there. Um, 
Yes, if it runs into mechanical issues, it can they can be repaired because they're using modern day parts. They can go into a dry dock in any country in the world for servicing. But this isn't a Carnival Cruise Liner ship. This isn't part of the Royal Caribbean family or Norwegian or MSC. They're on their own. So you're not going to have the luxury of uh, uh, going through a travel agency and uh, uh, booking through them with respect to the ship. This ship's going to have to be booked through separate booking systems. I don't even know what they're going to do. Who are they going to use? How is it going to be done? I worry about, uh, okay, the ship will be built, let's say, and put out at sea. Okay. Uh, but what if it's a money loser? What if this thing is losing $5 million a week or $2 million a week uh, because they can't fill it up? Because after all, the most popular cruise that this ship will have is between Southampton and New York City the first time. Uh, then they'll go from New York back to Southampton. Is it going to become a transatlantic traveler? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. It will replicate the original trip, yes. Uh, it, may even, it may even stop in the, in the ocean to lay a wreath over the uh, resting place of the actual Titanic and all of that. Yeah, ceremony, media, all kinds of promotion. But once it gets to New York, now what? Uh, the ship has to go to where the passengers want to be on a ship. And the, the ship had better have the modern day uh, conveniences that the competitors have to survive. So if you're going to take the ship to the Caribbean, you better have air conditioning. You better have swimming pools. You better have jacuzzis. Uh, you better have, and, and this ship apparently is going to be a very, very serious replica of the original from 1912, uh, folks. <laughs> 1912. Ocean liners compared to a 2019 uh, brand new uh, five star cruise ship. Uh, I'll tell you which one I'd rather be on. I'll take the new one instead of this one. Um, this Titanic is going to have a tough time competing. And I, I worry that um, it'll do well in its first year and then it might be all game over. I, I just don't know. I can tell you that every port of call the ship goes to, it will be the star of the show. The local TV cameras will be there. The local uh, the local YouTubers will be there. Uh, there'll be all kinds of media at every port of call. Boston, Philly, New York, uh, Baltimore, Charlotte, Miami, uh, 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 Port Canaveral, uh, Fort Lauderdale, wherever it goes. Anywhere in the Caribbean, anywhere in the world the ship goes, it will be a hit locally. But will that translate into cruising people to go on, passengers to pay? I don't know. And so we'll have to see. It is it is an interesting thing to talk about, but it isn't the Titanic. It has nothing to do with the original Titanic, really. Uh, it's Most of that is in our heads. And, uh, well, anyway, it's a, it's one man's dream coming to, to a reality. After many years and delays and all kinds of financial issues, it apparently is going to happen. So we'll know by 2022, 2023. So we'll keep an eye on it and we'll follow it. We'll see what happens. Paul Wilkes, yeah, Bruce, the cold we have uh, we all having is all your country's fault. It's all Canada's fault. We're just going to give it to you guys. Um, well, you know, I, I'm trying to help you guys get rid of your mosquito problem. Uh, if we sh send you a nice little cold front, there go the bugs, and that'll make things a little nicer. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to help. Uh, don't want to use raid all the time, I guess. Uh, Tom Henry, Sylvan Forest, Zanesville, Ohio. That's my fault. Oh, that's my name. That's the that's the uh, fallback uh, uh, city I'm using for my trivia question. I'm in trouble. Cool jazz, Bruce. You need the weather map behind you. Cat Rose, what which actually exists? Which actually exists? I have no idea what she's saying. What she's saying about the Tom Henry Cool Jazz on the 70 inch plaza this plasma display. Oh my God. Uh, Sylvan, uh, cool laugh out loud weatherman, Bruce. Uh, cool jazz. Uh, that's after you hit Lotto tonight, uh, Tom Henry. Uh, Sylvan Forest, strong storm at sea. I wish I were there. Oh, gosh. So, Tweety, oh, man, being in an inside room doing a rough sea sucks. I have to get my eyes on the horizon. There you go. I, I've learned my lesson. Uh, Tom Henry, someone on my uh, PC cruise site, on my PC cruise site, someone on my uh, PC cruise site was hoping the storm would not wipe out our ports of Puerto Vallarta or Mazatlan. I asked if the caravan would be hit and blown out to sea. <laughs> no, they're too far south. They're not going to be issued. They're not going to be in trouble there. So, Tweety, laugh out loud, Tom Henry. Kim, R, Kim Omar Brown, good evening, everyone. Hi, Kim. How are you, pal? Uh, Tom Henry, uh, unfortunately, I used I used A instead of A, What? and someone thought I wanted them to be hurt, and it was not too nice. Uh, uh, I used a, something there instead of one of those. The, 
Uh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. No, no, you don't mean anything bad. I understand. You. Tom Henry is a great guy. It's all good. It's all good, Tom. Cool, Jess, can you imagine getting a tattoo in a storm? Tom Henry or a shave or a haircut? Uh, Frank uh, Rotundo, last year on New England Cruise Wave, uh, nor last year, um, what is this? Uh, New England Cruise Wave hit North Nor'easter and went into it head on. So 20 foot waves don't bother me now. Uh, it was like 20, 20 hours long. Frank, I know what you're talking about. I, that cruise line, cruise I was on with, with Jennifer. Oh man, that was 30 hours. I don't want back. I don't want to do that again. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, after that, after that experience, 20 foot waves, ha, child's play. Yeah, no problem on a big boat. Not a problem now. Cat Rose, shave, potential out. Teresa Jordan, hi Bruce. Hi Teresa. Hi there, Teresa. Nice to have you here. Um, Frank Rotundo, don't ever get off in the Bahamas. Just stay on the ship, says Frank. Kelly, uh, I want to know about the MSC cruise. Bruce mentioned it the other day for 11 days, hoping the price goes down a little bit, being that it was right at Thanksgiving time. Uh, and uh, what the cruise was I talking about 11 days ago? The, the cruise was 11 days long in MSC. Give me a little more uh, detail. I'll see if I can remember it. So, Tweety, it's like a feeding frenzy when we get off the ship in some places. I want to get off the ship and go to the beach, not fight off salespeople. So, Tweety, you are so right. Certain islands are like that. Paul Williams, Kelly Haston, doubt the price will go down. Thanksgiving and Christmas are prime cruise times. The best time to get cheap cruises after Thanksgiving, before Christmas, and early January. Then you get some deals all over the place. Or There are deals now in the Caribbean, like right now. Uh, Cat Rose, so many ch chances for thieves. See, that's what uh, Cat Rose is saying. Brittany, uh, hi, Bruce and all. I'm taking a study, a break. I'm taking a study break to watch the show. I'm taking a break from studying to watch the show. I I'll get it. I'll figure it out. Welcome. Welcome, Brittany. Hi, uh, how you doing? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Sylvan, running the gamut in port is an almost everyday occurrence. The Bahamas are not the worst offenders out there. I have never feared anything in the Bahamas. You can't travel in a bubble like a... Uh, like a, I'm not sure what that symbol means, but yes, uh, Sylvine is right. If you are going to certain countries where it's uh, the standard of living is quite a bit lower than you, like Belize, Honduras, you're going to run the gamut. You're going to have to run the gamut outside those gates to get to where it is you want to go. Unless the, unless you're on a tour and you get to go on a bus that gets to come into the compound, then you can stay in the compound, get on the bus, go to where you're going to go, come back into the compound, get off the bus, get on your ship, and avoid the crowds. Frank Rotundo Carnival. Ah, oh, no way. Sylvan Hamster. Uh, oh, okay. Can't live in a bubble like a hamster. Thank you, Sylvan. Kelly Haston. Well, after Christmas, maybe April. Um, so Tweety, I think Cabo is way worse than the Bahamas. I wasn't too bothered in Nassau. Interesting. Brittany, it's currently 68 degrees and it's cold compared to the temperatures of last week. Yeah, I would say so. Pamela, not too thrilled about Carnival. Uh, Wendy, bye, Jen. Yeah, Jen's gone to get some diet, caffeine-free Coke so I can survive. Frank Rotundo. Kelly, two... First two weeks of December, cheaper. That's right. Cool, Jazz. Sylvan, you're so right. Just be aware of your surroundings. Paul Lucas, Kelly Haston, probably not because of spring break. Kelly, I am reconsidering Cabo since yesterday's chat. D&G, uh, hello, Bruce and TWB family. D&G, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the show. The folks, uh, the guys at D&G are now into the low 400s in their subscriber count and growing every day. Guys, welcome back. Pamela Aris going on Anthem again in June for 30th wedding anniversary same guy same guy oh man love that ship nine uh nine day two uh i'm not sure what nine dat two what does that actually mean pamela uh did she correct herself no she hadn't seen uh but is that your ninth time on that ship or um, or what fantastic uh pamela 30th anniversary congratulations well done um he's got to be doing something right uh or you're doing something really right Way to go, Pamela. Uh, congratulations on your 30th. Paul Wilgus, hello, Derek. How you doing? Kelly, aha, I'm just out of luck then. Uh, so, Tweety, hey, Derek. Frank, uh, Kelly, we sail every year, December 8th or so. Uh, book through Costco, cheapest. Fantastic. Paul Wilgus, Kelly Haston, laugh out loud unless you pay the higher price. Teresa Jordan, haven't uh, had issues in Nassau. Was there last month by the Carnival Victory of all ships? About that. Uh, isn't that something? Frank, uh, Kelly, in fact, most of our 44 cruises have been through Costco. Very good. When, you, when it works, it works. If it works for you in Costco, use it. I love vacationsgo.com. Sometimes I book right through the cruise line. Some people use their own private uh, travel agent. You just go with what works. And if it's Costco, it's Costco. Right on, Frank. D&G, hi, Paul Wilgus. And so Tweedy, work has been crazy. Wipe out. And I'm wiped out and I'm driving home. Yes, drive safe, my friend. Paul Wilgus, D&G Explorers, go home, relax, have a drink or two. Cool jazz. They might change Victory's name now. <laughs> That's right. Kelly Aston, 
Uh, I will check them out. I just got off the Carnival Horizon a few weeks ago. Uh, D&G, on my way to get pizza, the heck with Speedos. <laughs> so, Tweety, uh, not to mention dividends and growth. Um, uh, <laughs> Teresa Jordan, hmm, interesting. Paul Lugos, laugh out loud, Derek. Uh, Derek uh, Robert McCormick, we bought 110 shares of Carnival, uh, and it only, and it only, G. and then I don't quite know, it only got us a $50 credit. Oh, because, Robert, you probably took a shorter cruise in seven days. So uh, don't worry. Uh, the next time you get on a cruise, you'll use the credit again, depending on the length of your cruise. The longer you're on the ship, the bigger the cabin credit. So seven days, 100 bucks. Three days might be 50. Uh, 14, 15 days could be as, as much as 200, $250 credit. So just, just add it up. Just keep on going. Don't you worry about a thing. Cool jazz. Tom Henry will own NCL after night. After tonight, cool. Tom Henry, way to go, Kujas. Uh, Frank Rotondo, NCL is great. Robert McCormick got us $50 credit. So, Tweety, Robert, you can get more for longer trips. 15 80 Panama Cruise was a $250 credit. What did I just say? Uh, Tracy Dunlop, sorry, got to go. We'll catch you tomorrow. I'm going to see Halloween tonight. Tracy, go get him. Tom uh, Henry, I'm getting $100 on my uh, 11 9 cruise. Fantastic. Paul Lugas, say bye, Tracy. D&G, have a great night, Tracy. Randy Lucas, greetings, Bruce and all. High of 72 today on the Ridge in Paradise, California. Glad to be home for a few days. Randy, welcome back. I'm glad you made it. Uh, tell us, uh, give us your overall impressions, if you wouldn't mind. You just completed a back-to-back -back cruise out of Galveston, two seven-day cruises. How was it overall? Were you happy with everything? It sounded pretty good. Uh, did you enjoy the ports in the second cruise more than the first cruise or more in the first cruise than the second cruise? Tell us anything you want to tell us about those cruises. I'm so glad you're you're home safe and sound. D and G, how are you, Tom Henry? Mary Ellen Shaw, hi from SC. Uh, that's got to be South Carolina. Hi, Mary Ellen. D and G, uh, so Tweety, maybe those alarms are from me by forgetting my alarm passcode <laughs> at work, and the cops showed up, and you had to explain to the cops you forgot the pa the passcodes for your employer's alarm system. Oh, that had to have been. A long shift, my friend. Oh, that's a long shift. Uh, Paul Wilgus, laugh out loud. Derek, so Tweety, laughing out loud. And Jordan, good morning, Bruce and all. It's 31 in Brisbane today. Winter is over. Uh, ditto, happy birthday to Kay and Jay, to Kaya, Kaya and Janu in St. Thomas. They are 17 today. Big news. That's awesome stuff. Uh, Tom Henry, hi, Derek, having some issues. Tom Henry, how many times do you have to hit the reply button to get an email to work? Grr. And Jordan, hiya, so Tweety, D and G, Tom. D and G, ah, oh, sorry to hear, Tom. My work is crazy right now. Oh, I'm on here to relax. Uh, hiya, Jordan. And uh, Tom Henry, if I win the full amount, I might be convinced to buy us a group cruise. <laughs> it's got to be in my itinerary, though. I mean, you know, after all, I'm paying for it. Oh, Tom Henry, uh, the problems you will have when you win all that money, but uh, problems that I think you'd uh, welcome. Uh, yes, sir. You'll be a busy guy uh, managing your money, that's for sure. And Jordan, drive safely, Derek. Good luck to the lottery winner today. Paul Wilgus, Tom Henry, you have more problems with your, with your computer when you're here. It's incredible. So, Tweety, I'm, uh, I'm in it, Tom Henry. I'm in there. I'll be on your cruise. Frank Rontando, hello, and 84 here in Sarasota, Florida. Kelly Haston, me too. I'm there for this cruise. Tom Henry must be Facebook sucking up the bandwidth. Wendy, uh, trivia answer is Crestonville. That's my standby trivia answer. There you go. Paul Lugas, uh, Tom Henry probably it really does uh, use a lot. Uh, maybe that is the problem. Cool jazz. Tom Henry, you might want to purchase internet through Amazon. Paul Wilson, sorry, Bruce. I'm going to have to see uh, the reply of the replay of trivia tonight. I have to go to sleep soon. Paul Wilson, Wilson you do what you got to do. And enjoy the show at your leisure. No worries. And Jordan, hiya, cool jazz. Cool jazz. Hey there, lady. And how's your morning? Uh, white knock. Uh, does it have balcony cabins? Does it have balcony cabins? What cruise ship are you talking about? Um, because uh, we've been talking about a bunch of cruise ships. Oh, you're talking, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the Titanic. You're asking me about the Titanic. Does the Titanic 2 have balcony cabins? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, of all the imagery I've seen. I haven't seen balcony cabins. And that's another question I have. Who in their right mind is going to go on a ship like that? Maybe 500, 1,000 people at a time. But can they fill that thing up with, what is it, 2,500 passengers? No balcony. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Um, so, Tweety, I don't know if I'd want to sail on a ship model after the Titanic. See, there we go. Morning, Frank. How are you today? And Jordan is saying, um, let's see here. And Jordan, great, cool jazz. So, Tweety, sounds sketchy. Brittany. I forgot to say, it's been raining all day. Donna Mankinnon, hi, everybody. Hi, Donna. How are you, Donna? Welcome back. Sylvan Forrest, it is considered extremely bad luck to name a, 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 
the tea ship on a vessel. Uh, just like talking about Macbeth when rehearsing a theater play. See, bad luck to name a ship after another ship. Cool jazz, Tom Henry, if you win tonight, build your own ship and we can all go on a five-hour tour and stay. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a lot of money. We all hear about these headlines, what is it, $1.6 billion or whatever they know. But by the time you take out that take it all now option, take off the taxes, what's left? $300 million, $400 million? I don't know what's going to be left of the money. Uh, still a lot of money. I'm not downplaying how much money that is, but uh, uh, you don't want to spend all that money on a cruise ship. You know, you have to operate it and staff it. Are you kidding me? You're going to lose all your money in days. Uh, just, just be a passenger. Yeah, just be a passenger. Anyway. <laughs> so, Tweety, I haven't heard that superstition about Macbeth. Interesting, Sylvain. John Fabrizi, no rain for us in Pittsburgh until the weekend. That's right, John. You're getting rain, and it might be snow. It all depends on the cold front and the weather. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be fun. Paul Wilgus, laugh out loud, cool jazz. D&G, hi, Brittany Locke with Donovan McKinnon and Jordan. Anything with Clive Palmer on it uh, with this ship? Definitely a money pit. There you go. Uh, Frank, great and so Tweety. That sounds like a creepy and depressing cruise. <laughs> Stopping where everybody died. <laughs> Ooh, no thanks. Well, I could see, you know, relatives, you know, relatives of the passengers will want to, I, I don't know. Uh, cool, Jess. Bruce can be Captain Steuben. Oh, thanks a lot. And Jordan. Hey, Donna, uh, Tom, Wendy. Ah, uh, gosh. Uh, 5.36 p.m. here, and says Rank, Frank Rotondo. Um, John Fabrizi, I bet it'll be loaded with old people and historians. Uh, Tom Henry, good morning. And, and Jordan, awesome. Frank, D&G, I couldn't go on a cruise ship like that. Another fine show, Bruce. Richard C. is saying, thank you, Richard C. Um, D&G, don't forget to hit the like button and support Bruce. How many we got? 30 likes, three negatives. That's 33 interactions. Uh, we'll take the 33 interactions, but boy, I got 48 of you here. I could sure use some thumbs up so if you can spare them, folks. But hey, I'll do, we'll take whatever we get. D&G, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, Forrest Silva, the Republic of Kiribati actually exists. I've been there. And Jordan, I agree, D&G, not a cruise for me at all. Cat Rose, Zanesville, Ohio. Uh, Wendy Thompson, Bruce in Missouri. The weather people called out our cold winter weather and Alberta Clipper. That's what they love to say. They call it an Alberta Clipper. I can tell you right now, that jet stream didn't come from Alberta. It came over the, uh, no the Northwest Territories and then straight down. But it doesn't matter. We get Alberta gets blamed for it. it what can I say? But you know, if it gets rid of your mosquitoes, uh, I'll take the credit for that. Thank you very much. Uh, Brittany, New Orleans, Louisiana, and Titanic are my answers for... Uh, for some reason, if I'm not in for trivia, those are my answers. Um, uh, who we got here? What would happen to Hurricanes? Okay, uh, uh, knee, knee what is here? Knee what? Welcome to the channel. And what would happen if the hurricane would go across the whole of Mexico and hit into the Atlantic Ocean? Well, the, the, the thinking is the hurricane will do that, but it's going to probably uh, be right near the coast of uh, the Gulf of Mexico as it kind of wreaks havoc in Texas. Then it's going to go across to the Atlantic and it will hit the Atlantic and be steered north. And that's the problem. The worry is that when it gets there, there's one system in the Atlantic that is pushing air towards the USA. There's another system in the USA that's pushing air towards the Atlantic. And the two systems are going to do this. They're going to suck the air, suck these two, these two currents of air like this. And Willa is coming in the middle, and it's going to be squeezed in and shot right through the two systems and create all kinds of problems. We're going to take all this cloud cover, all this rain, and condense it into a tight, spot and shoot it through the two systems that are going to just it's like a baseball uh if you ever go to like a batting cage you know those those, those two wheels to turn around and the ball goes in between and pew, the ball gets shot out at you you're trying to hit the baseball on the batting cage it's just the same thing with this weather system and that's what hurricane willa the leftovers of all that rain are supposed to do in new york philadelphia washington baltimore boston that whole region is going to get inundated and then it's going up to canada and if it's cold air, it's snow. It turns into snow. I don't know. We'll watch it with great interest. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, very interesting. Cat Rose, I want to go to Neva St. Kitts. Um, hello, what would happen if the hurricane records? Okay, Tom Henry, I will be in St. Kitts a couple days after seeing Robert and the twins, um, November 15. Come along. Plenty of space left and solo at the per person rate, too. Good deals, Tom Henry is saying. Cat Rose, alas, my budget is toasted due to the last trip. Nina Frank, hi, Bruce and all. <laughs> Greetings from 10 degrees uh, Celsius, Sweden. That's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Only 30 days left now. Yoo-hoo, Nina's getting ready to go on a cruise. Tom Henry, uh, D&G Explorers. Did you see on the news, uh, Good Morning America, Prince Harry was sporting some Speedos? Uh... <laughs> Except they were over his slacks. 
<laughs> what is that, Tom Henry? Oh, that, that's an image. That's an image. Oh, my gosh. Doreen W. Hi. Hi, Doreen W. How are you? If you are new, I'm glad you're here. Uh, tell us, where are you watching us from? Welcome to the show. D&D, laugh out loud. No, Tom Henry, been at work since 4 a.m. I haven't been I haven't seen that yet today. Oh, no. d and saying hi, Doreen W. Uh, John Fabrizi, don't take a cruise out of New York in the beginning of November. Jersey week. All the schools are closed. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, my mom and I are planning a second Disney vacation in addition to us going in February. A Disney cruise out of New Orleans. Brittany, that's going to be great. John, we had 1,000 kids on the ship for Jersey Week. Oh, God, no. Don't be doing a cruise like that. Oh, no. Tom Henry, d and Sports. I started work at 4 a.m. too, but that was at my home uh, PC to get yesterday's limo trips posted so I could do my treadmill from 5.30 to 6.30, but I was a half an hour late for that schedule. Tom, the, this uh, your schedule is just too much. It's incredible. Uh, very busy yesterday, meaning lots of trips to post. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear the business is busy because you need all the money you can get for all those new windows, buddy. Make money. Uh, D&G, uh, that's awesome. Uh, Brittany Lockwood. Tom Henry, I will book the Haven on the Bliss and pack us all in just so we can torment you know who. That's right. We'll torment or torment the, uh, the Haven Nazi over there. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, my gosh. Everyone will have the cameras out, and we'll be filming him every step of the way. <laughs> oh, Paul Williams laughing out loud, Tom. Cool jazz. Uh, call, call the name, Tom. Call the name. Jump for breezy. <clears throat> I'll be at the uh, Steeler game Sunday. I hate sitting in bad weather games. It's like cruising in a rainstorm, John. For breezy. My wife will be watching closely. Uh, she will be watching that game with great enthusiasm because she is the ultimate Steelers fan. Uh, and uh, let's go Steelers. Uh, Regina Man, Cool Jazz, we all know who it is. Tom Henry, Cool Jazz, the A is like the T and not allowed. Ed will get upset. <laughs> cool Jazz, I know Reggie. Regina Man, smiling, Cool Jazz, uh, laughing. My, You know what, off? Uh, everyone's having fun here. I'm a troublemaker. They say it all the time, says Cool Jazz. And Jordan, hey, yeah, Reggie and her man. Uh, Tom Henry, traveling with Bruce, do you have a timeline for the storm hitting our area in D.C.? I am driving to PA, uh, Pennsylvania, on Saturday for niece's wedding, Saturday or Sunday. Right when you're doing it, the wedding is going to be a wash up. Watch out. Uh, again, this could change. I could be dead wrong. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing on the weather forecasters over the next three to four to five days. This is Tuesday, after all. So we're talking Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So four or five days from now, things can change. Could get worse, could get better. I don't know. We'll keep an eye. Uh, cool Jazz. Tom, did you replace the 1862 yet? Or are you waiting for your trip? Uh, Paul Wilgus, we are supposed to have cold air from Canada on Friday. Only 45 for a high, plus rain from Willa. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Uh, Jorge Nava, hello from Chicago. Another Chicagoan. This is awesome. Jorge, Jorg, Jorg Nava, Jorg Nava. That's I'm sure how you pronounce it. JN, welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. I love it when new people come in and say hi. This is great. Another Chicagoland uh, viewer. I got a number of you guys from Chicago. I love it. Welcome. Regina Man, Morning and Jordan. Tom Henry, Cool Jazz. Alas, it is gone forever, the 1862 room. I'm working on the Superior bottle, but I really don't drink much. Have a couple of other bottles for my visit to the Bacardi plant last November. Regina Man, rum for everybody. And uh, White Knock uh, is game one of the World Series tonight. I think it is. I believe so. And history says that on the first game of the World Series, stock markets don't have a good day. Guess what happened today in the stock markets? They did not have a good day. Tom Henry, Cool Jazz, I am doing a tour with three others in San Juan, but maybe I can convince them to go to the Bacardi factory with me. That'd be a cool tour, absolutely. Restock yourself, absolutely. Or uh, stock up at uh, in St. Thomas, because there's somebody there we know that can probably help you find some pretty good quality rum at some pretty fair pricing. Uh, and this individual knows all the rules and regs as to how you can take it back to the USA. Uh, you may want to check that one out. Absolutely. By the way, those of you who are here, I uh, don't know if you all are here this morning at the beginning of this show, but a special shout out to Peter Heckema today and Robert Brandt. Both were kind enough to make a donation to this channel overnight through my PayPal uh, site, which is uh, on the homepage up here somewhere. And I just wanted to make sure everyone is aware of that. Robert Brandt is, is alive and well. And uh, I thank him very much for his continued support of this channel. I love it. Cat uh, Rose, Boston. Uh, D&G, I think so. White Knock, I got a pizza special for it. Laugh out loud. Tom Henry, no restrictions on liquor. 
bought in U.S. territories. Paul Wilgus, DNG Explorers. So that's why you're picking up pizza today. See, there you go. They're picking, he's picking up pizza today. He's had a he's had a rough day. He can't cook at home. Got to buy some pizza. Take it home with him. Uh, Wendy Thompson, Michigan versus Penn on November three. Who's in for a watch party? And Jordan is giving Bruce thumbs ups. I got thirty two thumbs ups. Thank you so much, you guys. Tom Henry. I will have space in the luggage after the twins' gifts are taken out. Oh, there you go. You're taking them down personally. Love it. It's fantastic. Uh, this is great. Uh, yeah, bring back all the rum you can from St. Thomas. You got a buddy down there who will help you shop at the right place for the right price. Absolutely. D&G, &G, uh, because it's cheap and I'm cheap when I come. <laughs> with the cruise coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's cheap and I'm cheap. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, cheers to all of you from Traveling with Bruce in Creston, British Columbia, Canada. Caffeine-free Diet Coke. Um, the last of my stash, but the good news is Jennifer is out right now in the car picking up some provisions, including caffeine-free Diet Coke to keep me going a couple of more days so I can stay on the air. Um, thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, there you go. I think that's the show. I'm going to be on again in a couple of hours. Those of you who don't know, I have trivia tonight, live TWB trivia tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Right now it is, uh, what is it now, uh, almost 6 o'clock Eastern or 7 o'clock Eastern? What time is it now? So it's 3 plus 3, 6 o'clock Eastern almost now. I'll be on in two hours and four minutes for trivia for, uh, or exactly, sorry, three hours for trivia. I would love to have you come by. Exactly two hours for trivia. I'm sorry, I keep screwing up. I'm looking at Western time here. And I'm thinking about Eastern time. It's three o'clock Western. Right now it's six o'clock Eastern. And in two hours, I've got trivia. And I'll let, let me take a look at the topics. Let's see what I got here. Oh, yes. I've got a, I've got a question about cities. I've got a question about, oh, other cities. And then I have a question here about, ooh, I got a question here about music. I got a question here about music. Oh, I love this one. And then I have a country. I have a country question. Questionable country. Oh, I got beer. Oh, we're talking about beer tonight. Oh, we're talking beer. And uh, what's that? Oh, oh, I got something else here. I can't even. I can't even give you a hint as to what it is. Because if I give you a hint, you'll start googling on me. No cheating on trivia tonight. Um, I got a whole bunch of questions ready to go. I look forward to having you come by and spend it with me for trivia tonight. This will be fun, fun, fun. Um, D and G. I'm a San Francisco Giants fan. I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, Seabat, uh, at Seabat. I don't know what that means. Uh, John Fabrizi, six. Uh, what does that mean? Tom Henry, uh, will you be back at eight? Um, oh, people are trying to help me with the time. Uh, will you be back at eight? Uh, Sebastian is being asked by Tom Henry. So, Tweety, see you all later, everybody. Paul Wilgus, see you all later for trivia. Don't forget the thumbs up. Tom Henry, bye. So, Tweety, Reggie and her man, cities, no way. Um, and Jordan, great show, Bruce, uh, and all have an awesome day. Uh, Tom Henry music. Oh my, not good at that. No good at that. Uh, Tom, uh, so Tweety, Tom Henry. Um, uh, I'm not sure what that's going on there. So how about some Star Trek trivia? I got to do some Star Trek trivia, don't I? I'll have to come up with some Star Trek trivia sometime. Maybe on Thursday night, I'll do some Star Trek trivia or Star Wars trivia, uh, more movie trivia, something like that. You guys have any suggestions on the kind of trivia you want me to do? You let me know. I'll see if I can put some together. I uh, love doing trivia, and we have a good time at it. 33 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for 33 thumbs ups. If you could spare one as you're heading home, I would appreciate that very much as you're, as you're signing up. I will see everybody here in uh, two hours, uh, one hour. Make that one hour and uh, 57 minutes or so uh, for trivia tonight. Uh, thank you for all your comments, questions, uh, and everything else. I enjoyed the show as always. I look forward to seeing you tonight. And those of you who aren't here tonight, I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday show, 5 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. Keep your eye on my channel. I may be posting more videos as we go forward as well because I'm always scheming up some short ones, and we'll talk to you later. All right, this is it, October 23rd, 2018. Bruce saying thanks for joining me today on my live telecast, and I'll see you guys in less than two hours. Live trivia right here. Be here, be there, or be square. How about that? I'll see you soon. Okay, guys, bye for now.